Hey guys, welcome back. <clears throat> I'm hoping that all of you have Photoshop on your computers now. You'll notice I don't have my camera up. I'm noticing that I'm getting a little bit of lag and delay when I have that running and recording at the same time. So until I free up some space here, you guys won't be able to see me, but it'll make things run a bit smoother here. So let's go ahead and open up Photoshop. It should be in your dashboard already. If not, you can go to Finder and Applications. And then here it's alphabetical. You could find Photoshop this way as well. So let's go ahead and open this up. And I just want to go through some basic Photoshop user interface and navigation. We're not going to be doing anything in particular in this video except just going through some of the functions. This might be a recap for some of you. I noticed in the survey that some of you do have some experience with Photoshop, but it looked like a good majority of you have never used it before. So this will be good. We can start from the ground up. It'll be a refresher for, for those of you that have used it before, and it'll be a good introduction for those of you that are new. So when we open up Photoshop, we come to this screen here, and let's just go to Create New, and we'll go through some of these various options when starting a new document. Okay, we look here on the right, we have all these presets that we can change around. We can change the name of the file and width and height and this pull down menu here will show us various units of measurement. Let's just keep it on inches for now, but pixels is often helpful in the future, but inches and I have just a standard eight and a half by 11. We can change our orientation from portrait to landscape. And then resolution here, the default is going to be 72. Now you'll often see another option of 300 DPI. So 72 DPI versus 300 DPI. The DPI is uh, essentially uh, dots per inch, dots or PPI, pixels per inch. And this all just determines on what you're going to be doing with the specific image you're using. If you're going to be printing it, a high, a high quality print would be better at 300 DPI. But anything online or anything for the web, you know, your monitor's resolutions all have different, different ratios as well. But 72 DPI is, is what we're going to be keeping things at for, the, for most of what we do in this class. And again, here you can select pixels per inch or centimeter. We'll keep that on inches. And then color mode, RGB color, 8-bit is usually going to be the default. But here we can just quickly go through these five here. So we have bitmap, grayscale. RGB, CMYK, and lab. A bitmap image is essentially a one-bit image. Now this one bit of information is either on or off, and your computer understands this to be black or white for Photoshop, right? So if it's on, it's one. If it's off, it's zero, and this translates to a black or white bitmap image. A grayscale is a gradient of black to white, and typically when we talk about grayscale, we're talking about eight bits of information here. So let's look and see how this math works out. So remember, a one-bit image is two colors, black and white. A two-bit image would be four colors. A four-bit image is 16 colors. And if we keep going up, we'll get to eight bit, which works out to be 256 colors. Now, how do we get this? We're basically doing 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 to the 8th power, to give us 256 different color possibilities. So in a grayscale image, we have 256 tones from black to white. RGB, this is probably going to be the most important color mode for us. RGB is basically red, blue, and green. And this is the color mode that we will use for all digital or web outputs. RGB in Photoshop gives us the option of 8-bit, 16-bit, and so forth. And what this means is that each hue, red, blue, and green, has eight bits. And if we recall from grayscale, that means that each color has 256 different shades, different tones of that base hue. So an eight bit RGB image is 24 bits total. So eight, eight, and eight. And this works out to give us over 16 million colors. That's a lot of colors. Let's look at RGB, but 16 bit now. So we have red, blue, and green. Now instead of eight bits, we have 16 bits. So remember, it goes up exponentially here. So where eight bit was 256 colors, 16 bit is over 65,000 colors for each particular hue. A 16 bit RGB image would be 48 bits total. And if we do this math, we get 281 
trillion colors that are possible with a 16-bit RGB image. Now, this is astronomical. Why would we ever want to have a color mode with this many possibilities? Later on, we'll look at some more fine-tuned editing, and we'll look and see how banding can occur when we're trying to make fine-tuned adjustments in gradient layers. But for our purposes, 8-bit RGB is going to work out just fine. We may do some things later on in the course where we'll shuffle this around a little bit. CMYK, this stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Now what you should know about CMYK is these are for printing purposes. So these are the inks, right? These are the different color inks in your digital printer. And it works out the same, but there's one extra color. So an 8-bit CMYK image is actually 32 bits total. 16-bit would be 64. I'm sorry, not 62. But the thing to remember, CMYK is used for printing. And this will be important later on when we're deciding what we're going to be doing. But we'll be primarily using RGB for everything. But later on, if we're going to be printing anything out, I'll show you how to change these settings for printing purposes. And the last one, lab, um, we'll go over this later on in the semester. This is a bit complicated. It's more for professional editing techniques. But just so you know, lab basically splits the colors of your image into three different channels. So lightness and A and B for different red, green, and blue, yellow axes. So that was a bit of technical information for you there. But so RGB color, 8-bit. Again, this will be the standard for most of what we do. And then background contents, we can leave that white. So let's go ahead and create this document. Now I have all my keys here for you so you can see everything that I'm doing. And I'll post a PDF of the shortcut keys that I find to be the most helpful. Okay, so if you're new to Photoshop, there's a lot of information to take in here. First thing, I guess I'll just go over this really quickly. So in this little upper right hand corner here, we have Essentials, which is the default. But depending on what you're doing, if you're going to be doing some digital painting or photography, you can click on one of these here and it will pull up kind of a list of preset tools that it thinks will be most helpful for you. So let's just make sure that's on Essentials here so we're all on the same page. Okay, so across the top, your menu bar here. Again, this is probably common knowledge to most of you, but within Photoshop, we can change our own preferences here with all of these tabs. File, this is for opening and saving and exporting. Edit, if we need to do some fine tuning with copying or pasting or transformations, we can do this here. Image is where we can adjust image size, rotation, adjust canvas size. Make, if we're, especially when we're getting into photography, you know, here all where we can pull up adjustment layers here, but I'll show you other areas where you can do this. And, you know, the thing about Photoshop is you can do almost everything like 10 different ways. So this is one way to go about getting to your adjustment layers. And then speaking of layers, everything in Photoshop is virtually built with layers. And we'll get into that. Again, we're just going through some of the, the user interface here. Type, when we're dealing with text, here we have options where we can manipulate that. Some finer selection tools. Again, we'll go over this as we get into these projects, but this is how we would um, get into more specific selections. There's a lot of cool effects that Photoshop has built in that can add to your artworks here. There's some three-dimensional things as well. We won't really be working with this much, but this is where if you, you know, decide to play around with this in your own free time, this is where you would go. And then view, if we want to customize or modify how the interface is, is presenting itself to us, this is where we can go for that. And then Photoshop has a ton of information that's hid from you, but you can always pull this up here and pick these things out individually. And these will all come up here on this right side, on these right toolbars here. So if we wanted to see, I don't know, for example, the history of what we're doing, I mean, that can be brought out there. But there's also shortcuts here where we can always pull that type of information out. If you want to arrange the workspace in a way that's better suited for you, you can do this here as well. But again, if we're looking at trying to find individual information that we're trying to pick out, that's one way to go about doing it, but we can also, we can also pull that information out here as well. Okay, and then help. Photoshop has uh, a help tab here that can be quite useful. 
Okay, on the left here, these are our tools. Again, you can customize and move things around. Oh, change that in here. So we can see also in the document here, we can see RGB 8-bit. So we always know what we're working with as well. So with these tools, again, we can see that there's a lot of information here, but if you hover, hover over each one of these, there's a little, a little graphic that plays and you get an idea of what that tool can do. Notice you can also see the shortcut key for it. So the rectangular marquee tool M, M being the shortcut key for that. These are, these will be helpful to, to, to get down, although not essential for, for starting out, but they will speed things up, things up considerably. And you'll notice with these tools, the little triangle here, if you click and hold, you'll see that those will expand into more options. So all the tools are of a general type, but here you can get into an individual, individual um, tools that might do different things here. Also notice that as we click on each one of these tools, this menu across the top is changing. These are our toolbar presets here, and here we can go in and we can change and customize things as we'd like as well. So I'm on the brush tool here, and we can see across the top, there's things I can play with, the opacity, right? how transparent I want the mark to be. I can change the brush size and the hardness. I don't have any preset uh, brush types here, but we can upload different patterns or what we want that mark to look like. And then Whenever we're messing around with these things, if we ever want to just reset things back to normal, the little gear in here, we can reset tool or reset all tools back to the default. That can be helpful when you're um, wanting to get things back to a standard. So again, play around with this here. I mean, get familiar with the interface. Again, we're not going to start anything here in this video. This is just getting you introduced to the space. And the next one, we'll start going into more specifics and selection tools and I'll show you how to go about getting your own photographs into Photoshop so we can begin manipulating those for our upcoming project.